So here's what I'm starting with. Your basic GMT 400 center console. It's a, it's a nice enough console, sure. You know, it's got room for a whole bunch of stuff. This would be like a CD holder, but I usually put a water bottle in there. It would have been much better to have two cup holders there instead of CDs. And You know, back in the 90s, 80s, 90s when these were designed, that's what you would have had for your music. So you've seen a lot of people actually go through and take these GMT 800s center consoles. And specifically this kind, because it has the two, two, two cup holders plus a slot that would be good for phones and things like that. In there's, yeah, CD. This one does have like the CD sliders in there. It would have had a hatch if I'd have got, got the one with the hatch. The hatch was missing. There were some sort of controls, or no, a CD deck was in here. Controls were back here for rear AC. I have plans for both of those slots. So first things first, I need to pull all of this out because I'm using this basically as a shell. I've got my MDF boards over there. I'm going to use those to build the actual structure of this thing and this plastic will just slip over the top of it and give me room for my 10 inch woofer in there. And so here's one of those things. You look at how much space is wasted inside this console. That's a good two inches, good two inches. That's one of the things I am to fix with my constructions. I will have to stop back here because of what comes here. <laughs> Coffee spilled. For the cup holder that's back there, I do want to retain that. I do need space back there. But I'm going to expand this box. And I've got at least to the bottom of the cup holders here for my actual base box. So there's not a lot of room to get a big box in here if you still intend to use the center console. You could do bigger if you cut off the bottom of that and only wanted a shallow box in here. You could have a much bigger box, but I'm not going to do that. I want, I want storage space in here, and I want it as wide as this is. I've been using a combination of the BSI Max Cure Extra Thick Sio Anacrylis. It's super glue basically, but you have the accelerator that I have both in spray form and this needle form I just picked up. Works a lot better. So I'll get the initial placement with that. Then I'll lock it in old school style with some JB Weld. 
And since it's cold, it's March, well, it's not as cold as it was a month ago. It is taking longer than the 15 minutes this stuff is supposed to cure at. So you can see I'm locking it together in certain key places. The two pins that go here, tabs that go here and here broke. Couldn't remove those, so those are done. So I'm gluing it all together there. And up along this seam up here, so this will all be permanently one piece now from here on out. I got the wiring done there. And I've upgraded everything. The factory was 18 gauge. I've done everything up to 14 gauge because that's four different power ports that'll be on the back side of this for different uh, different uh, entertainment devices, whether it be the Kindles or whether it be a, a TV, a little back of the headrest TV screen for the video player. I upgraded the connector. I was thinking about using the factory one. Those factory ones are a little small compared to the bigger ones that I'm using here, these weather pack connectors should be better with a 14 gauge wire. On this side, all that structure's out and you've got a three piece unit here. Once I've glued it all together, yeah, it's started. All right, you can see the beginnings of what I'm after here and all the machinations I'm going through. It is now one piece, drilled holes and riveted in here. It's not the most ideal because it gets in the way of actually doing a flush one piece all the way through. But I'm not sure exactly how else to go about this with what I've got and which room, how much room I've got. It's this stupid curve in right here. 
If GM had made this a one piece, that would have been no problem just to get that wood flush straight through there, but I can't. And rivets aren't exactly the most ideal way, so I would call that temporary at best. The last thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to slather all this down with some epoxy and make that joint a little more permanent. And then the next time I get at it, I'm going to finish up the boxes for the interior. And I say boxes because there's the box for the music and there's the box for the storage. But yeah, and then all the, the wiring and power and everything else has got to go with it. So, yeah. Time for more JB Weld. All right, at first swing, it's not that bad at all. I'm going to do a little bit of trimming here. And it'll slide up further. It matches here pretty decently. But yeah, stuffs the seats a little bit more.
All right, there we go. The places I was most worried about any sort of air leakage is right there on the back side. So that's covered in Bondo glass. Old can. First batch I mixed up, I mixed up a little too hot. Too much cream hardener in it. Second batch was a little better. Just got to remember how to do these things. With that coating there. And inside there should take care of the biggest gaps I had. And that'll make up for lack of precision in my uh, joinery. So you know what they always say, paint and putty are a carpenter's buddy. And that's definitely the kind of carpenter I am. I am not by any means a cabinet maker. But the gaps back here that I see, some of the gaps there, that's in the box of the storage box. That won't matter. But the stuff on the back side of the air box, that's going to get covered with a layer of fiberglass and resin. That'll keep all of that nice and tight. Just thinking about, as you can see, the light back there. Eh, maybe you can see it. Yeah, you see the light coming through back there. So I've got gaps, but I think most of it's filled by glue. There might be some that go all the way through. So to take care of that, there will be fiberglass on the exterior of this entire thing. Well, it takes care of that, and it also provides a measure of waterproofness. Waterproofness, is that a word? I'm a wordsmith. I make up words. But yeah, there we go. For what you don't have in precision, you can make up with in other materials. Alright, there it is. I'm not fully fiberglassing the whole thing. I'm just putting fiberglass, especially on the box portion here, because that's half inch MDF. Just fiberglass here, inside. One layer each. Um, I had extra pieces, so that ended up being more layers back there, but that's fine. I took a piece and ran it here, 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 continuous, and I'm looking to seal any of the joints that I had problems with. I would bet they're already sealed by the, the Bondo glass. Now the point here, and you look at this, and I know I'll get people a little comment, oh, that's too much resin. Yeah, it's too much resin. Don't care. The point of the resin is not for strength. The three-quarter inch MDF is giving strength. Realize resin is basically a plastic. It becomes a plastic once you've actually mixed the two parts and applied it yourself. And that's what I'm looking for is the waterproofing of it. The only reason that piece is even there is because it was extra I had it. Same thing on this side. I had an extra piece, so I put it there. No pieces here, pieces here, both sides. All I need this to really do is to maintain waterproofness, and I did want a little bit more strength and rigidity. I mean, MDF is pretty solid on its own, but I wanted strength for that half inch piece. I used half inch there because it's more pliable and I can shape it to where I want it, and it gives me more internal space. Besides the fact that I didn't need the solidity the speaker box needed with three quarter. Don't need that back there. So now the whole thing is actually reinforced. I did several pieces down here. Had an extra long strip there, so just threw it in there because there's plenty of resin to soak it up. Had the two main pieces there and there. So that's got a nice surfboard looking strength there. Now all I got to do is sand it and paint it.
So there it is, all bolted together, all buttoned up. And it'll give me all the functions I want. I used a speaker terminal from Steve Mead. It's a Kenwood shallow 10 inch. You saw me put polyfill in there because I'm not so certain I've got the volume I'm supposed to have for this. I might have, might not. I didn't, measuring an irregular shape like that's not something I want to do right now. But I'll have to say this, this is the first time I've ever had a Kenwood speaker. Not exactly happy with it, um, just in the install. All my Rockford Fosgate speakers come with a rubber felt type gasket on the backside. This came with that foam tape. It got caught up in one of the screws, the, the tape portion of it, not the foam, and it wrapped up and bent. Luckily there was extra because I had to dismount it, reinstall it, but you need that foam to seal it. And so now it's back in. I had to over drill. Again, I don't like, it comes with wood screws. And you can do that, it'll hold. But if you ever have to dismount this or you ever want to replace it, it's much better to go with some of those wood inserts and some N6 cap head screws. So they're all in there, nice and neat, more machined type attachment. And uh, the only thing that I'm not liking either is it doesn't have any sort of grill. It has this rubber cap that I need to put on there. But yeah. It's going to be facing forward towards the dash, so the likelihood of something getting to it is very, very low. Still, I would like a grill, and maybe I'll see if there is one for sale for the for Kenwood. But otherwise, my... It's in. I have a lot more room in here. I have a power port here. Wires are run inside there between the plastic and the wood. Did the best I could here. That has to be that way because of how the attachments happen for the backside. If I'd have left this whole backside a separate piece, could have done that different. Wiring out the back here for power, we'll hook all that up. I'll have a cigarette lighter here, style power hookup, a cigarette lighter here, style power hookup, and two USBs. It's actually four, so two in each of these. And that's going to give all kinds of room for accessories. I'll put the cup holder back in here, so there's a cup holder for the rear two seats. Still have a lot of wiring to do to make this totally what I want it to be, but as far as being a speaker box slash more expanded storage console, it's there. It's done. Notice this, these little rubber, I need more rubber. Isolators, boots, whatever you want to call them. So right now it's just on plastic. Well, that's it. I used the uh, same kind of wood inserts and then these button head style cap screws and use those to set it to it. So it's all pretty freaking solid one piece. All right, so that's that. It's ready to go in the truck. I've already got about 30 minutes of footage on this. I don't normally like to do two part videos, but this one I'm probably gonna break into two parts. It's just gonna have to. So part one's how I built all this. Part two is gonna be how I wire it all. Because obviously you see this, I don't have switch panels in there yet. I've got the wires for that all run, but I've got to hook it all up and get it all done. There's a whole lot of other features I want to add to this, too. And that's going to take me most of tomorrow to do all that. Besides building up brackets and, and things like that, too. So that's, that's where I'm going to cut this one off. You can see how you can build yourself an interior wooden box, shell out the plastic one, and get it slide over and built over. So if you know how to do all of that, you probably know how to wire things, too. So don't know yeah that's probably good for this video um, if you're curious to see how I'm gonna wire it and what other features I'm gonna add to it then by all means stay tuned for the next video installment where I do all of that uh, gonna do it tomorrow don't know when I'll actually have the video ready to go but I'm thinking I'm gonna cut it off here and get this video put out tonight so if you've come this far you watched all 30 some odd minutes of this appreciate you doing so I hope it gave you some good ideas mm -hmm.